Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video, doing January Friday for today's first video. So as always on Friday, we're having your uh, month head look ahead. This is going to take us through um, the next month. So we're going to go through the next four weeks with Japanese CFS V2 models. It takes us uh, pretty much to the end of April. So it's going to be an April look ahead, uh, if you like. Coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your week to 10-day uh, video update as always. But uh, starting us off today is a JMA Friday. So we're going to start off with the 500 millibar. Height anomaly flow charts from the uh, JMA. Looking at the North Pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, just here in the latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around there. Uh, yellow, uh, orange and red extrapolating to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Means to break it down into weekly peers. The first weekly peer will take us from today, the 29th of March, through to the 5th of April. So, the coming week, we're going to have an area of above average heights just to the west of the uh, UK. Quite a strong anti cyclonic signal, but sitting out to our west with below average heights up to the north. The jet stream is doing something a bit like that. So, it's a little bit cooler, a little bit more unsettled potentially in the weekend. And that's particularly so for northern parts of the country. Just a bit exposed to those northwest winds, just a bit more influence from the jet with the high pressure out to the west of us that will allow cooler air to move down from the north. Not necessarily all that cold, but certainly a little bit cooler compared to what we've had through the second half of March. Uh, then, very big changes uh, for week two. This is the 5th through to the 12th of April. And uh, we start to centre the area of above average heights up towards Scandinavia. So we're generating a Scandinavian high here. And it ridges out into the uh, Atlantic as well, with below average heights developing to our south. That's going to turn the winds into the east. So we'll start to pick up easterly winds there as we go from the 5th through to the uh, 12th of April. Probably quite chilly uh, easterlies. Uh, East is in April. They're fairly common, actually, and they get even more common as you get through to May. Those are the two most easterly months of the year, if you like, April and May. So nothing particularly out of the ordinary. And in April, they tend to be pretty grim, really, easy winds. They tend to bring a lot of cloud, a lot of murk, damp weather and chilly conditions. Probably not all that cold, really. There will almost certainly not be a very cold source of air over the uh, continent. So just generally quite cool, cloudy, damp conditions potentially as we go through into the uh, second week of April, the 5th through to the 12th. And then we go through to weeks three and four, which takes us from the 12th through to the 26th of April. And we still have a signal for the high pressure to be over Scandinavia. So we still got this Scandinavian high with below average heights to our south. Winds pulling in from an east or southeasterly type uh, direction. So, again, with high pressure in control, it's not going to be overly unsettled. You would expect quite a bit of dry weather. Um, and perhaps winds shifting more sort of uh, south of east as opposed to being uh, gen generally easterly. So it may be drier and warmer with south easterly winds perhaps through the uh, second half of the month. Certainly no sign of anything particularly Atlantic driven here, you have to say. It's sort of high pressure in control throughout the month, but the position of the high pressure is changing from uh, being to the west of the UK next week to then being over Scandinavia to the east or east of us through uh, the rest of April. Let's have a look at the uh, mid latitude and tropical view in terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies with the JMA. So this is uh, a reminder of week one 500 mm high only British Isles is in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. The coming week has the above average heights over and to the west of the country. Jet stream sort of dipping down a bit like that. So a little bit of an influence from the jet, particularly so for northern parts of the country. It is a cooler week coming up. Temperature anomalies are actually being forecast to be a bit below average, and that's because the wind is in from the northwest in the weekend. So it's a rather cool wind direction that we've got coming up in the weekend. But it's relatively dry. The Atlantic is blocked off. So overall, it's a little bit drier than average. But certainly temperatures do take a bit of a dip compared to what we've had recently. Then we go through to week two. We can't see Scandinavia on this view, by the way. Scandinavia is up there. But we know in week two, we've got an area of high pressure centering over Scandinavia, which is probably bringing wind into the east. 
across uh, the country. So temperature anomalies, even though wind's swinging to the east, actually temperature anomalies lift up. So it goes a little bit milder than average in week two from the 5th through to the 12th of April. Uh, that's indicative of the fact there's not going to be much in way of cold air, genuinely cold air, in April over the continent. But remember, this will be a very cloudy, if it comes off, it'll be very cloudy, it'll be damp, it'll be drizzly. So, particularly for the eastern side of the country, not particularly pleasant conditions. And still generally on the drier than average side, the Atlantic's uh, blocked off, so um, coming out dry than average there. And then we've uh, through to uh, weeks three and four, which is the 12th through to 26th of April. And we still have the high pressure to our northeast. So that's still going to be bringing up wind from an sort of easterly, but perhaps a little bit more southeasterly type direction. Temperature anomalies are a little bit milder than average. Notice most parts of Europe are getting quite warm now as the wind begins to pull around more south of east and starts to drag milder or warmer air up from the Mediterranean. Uh, Asia-wise, still looking generally quite dry. Heights have fallen to the south in this period, so it's actually wetter to us to the south of us. And maybe that would uh, hint at a little bit of thunder, maybe, trying to move up from the south. So the second half of April poss po possibly turns a bit warmer, but uh, possibly for the south anyway, we start to have to think a little bit about heavy showers, maybe thundery uh, rain moving up from the south, maybe. That's a long way off, of course, weeks three and four, taking us into the second half of April. This is how the CFS V2 is looking. So again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly pairs. The first weekly pair will take us from the 29th of March to the 4th of April. The coming week has the above average heights over and to the west of the country, very much in line with what the JMA is showing. Below average heights are up to the north. The uh, jet stream is on a northwest southeast alignment, rather like that. So I mean, it's not going to be overly unsettled, but it might be a bit more unsettled compared to what we've had recently. And temperatures probably take a little bit of a tumble as well. Uh, then we go through to uh, week two. This one is the 5th through to the 11th of April. We have above average heights to our east and northeast. Uh, below average heights out to our west and southwest. This is going to be turning wind into the east. So again, it's mainly dry, I would have thought, away from the west anyway. The Atlantic is blocked off. Winds are in from the east, which probably brings in a lot of cloudy, damp, uh, drizzly conditions. The model will probably say it's a mild and average week, but underneath all the cloud and gloom and murk, probably it'll be quite chilly and quite uh, cheerless. Then we go through to week three, which is the 12th to the 18th of April. Again, high pressure is in over Scandinavia. Winds are probably coming in from an easterly uh, type direction there, so very little change in week three. Uh, and then all change again in week four. So this is the 19th to the 25th of April with below average heights then out to the northwest of us, above average heights to the west of Spain. Uh, winds again westerly, so probably turning more unsettled uh, with that, uh, bringing some showers, longer spells of rain in from off the Atlantic. Temperature anomalies for week one, the 29th of March to the 4th of April. Overall, close to average, a little bit milder than average for the north and west, a little bit cooler than average for England and Wales. Then we all start to turn a bit milder than average in week two. This is the 5th to the 11th as the wind's turning easterly. Temperatures are going uh, milder than average. Week three, substantially milder than average. That's quite a warm week coming up there. So it implies the air is more south of east than sort of east or north of east. So that starts to bring the winds up from, or the air starts to come up from uh, southern Europe. And it turns warmer from the 12th to the 18th of April. And then we keep it pretty warm, although the wind turns westerly in week four. But we keep the temperature anomaly above average from the 19th to the 25th of April. Uh, week four is milder than average. Precipita uh, precipitation, finally. So week one, precipitation, 29th of March, 4th of April. Drier than average generally in the week ahead. Week two is close to average uh, with precipitation. So it implies probably a slightly more unsettled week, actually, as those winds going to the east. It probably brings showers, damp conditions in from off the North Sea. Uh, remember through to week three, probably losing the signal a little bit uh, close to average with precipitation there. I mean, it just seems to be a little bit wetter than average, maybe, in week four. And that's particularly for the northwest of the country as the winds are turning back to the west 
uh, it starts to turn a little bit more unsettled with rain coming in from off the Atlantic. So it's a mixed bag, but overall it looks like uh, we're facing some easterly winds for April, which is not uncommon. As I say, April and especially May are our most easterly uh, months of the year. And then we get to June and we tend to get a return of the westerlies. So it's not um, particularly unexpected that we will get a spell of the easterly winds through April. And they'll probably drag in a lot of cloud, a lot of gloom, a lot of murk. Um, but uh, overall, it doesn't look like anything too dramatic is happening. And still, the hints are there, but it's pretty dry, really. There's no sign of anything especially wet coming up in uh, the next four weeks, certainly from these two models anyway. So, easterly winds for April, but they won't be particularly cold. Easterly is probably just very typical uh, for the time of the year. Right, so that's it for JMA Friday. We'll be back later on with your week to 10 day video update. So come back for that then. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.